of nostalgia so it came about uh, through our interdisciplinary programming meeting. As you know, artist-run centers get hundreds of proposals every year. And uh, these three artists uh, all had presented proposals to Open Space and we decided to organize their work together because they all seem to be irritating this idea of nostalgia in very different ways. And uh, it's turned out that it's been kind of a, an interesting exercise to see how we can make these three artists fit in the space and have a nice dialogue with one another. Martin Beauregard, unfortunately, was not able to join us, and his work was stuck at the far end. But Rosha and Brad were able to meet him, to be with us or be here tonight. Um, probably all of you know Brad, uh, who teaches uh, at the University of Victoria. And I think you also do and Camosa as well. I think you've taught everywhere. I know that you were born in Vancouver, and uh, you, I think you got your master's degree here at UVic. And he's had a lot of exhibitions recently at the Milano Art Gallery and in Calgary as well, just last month. Yeah. So, it's a lot. So, um, I'm going to turn it over to Brad now to uh, just give us a little bit of an introduction to his work. And then we'll turn it over to uh, Rocha. Rocha. Thank you. Um, okay, so maybe I'll start by uh, thanking Open Space and Helen for the opportunity for this exhibition, which I think is uh, a great opportunity. Um, and then, in terms of introducing the work, I, I have a habit of over talking about things, and I probably don't want people to have to, have to sleep. So maybe we'll do something a little bit more casual, which would probably be more uh, enjoyable for all of us. Uh, in allowing maybe more of an open forum or there's sort of a Q&A scenario, but I'll just give you a, a quick synopsis on uh, what brought me to this work. Um, I've been, since my, uh, since my MFA at UVic, I've been working on a series of uh, theatrical sets that explore the relationship between domestic and uh, natural spaces. Um, and if, for those of you who are familiar, you get a sense of, of how that uh, manifest itself, and for those of you who don't, uh, they're just these sets that are uh, built in my studio and then I put them into the landscape. Uh, and there's a separation on the edge where the natural landscape exists, and these objects, these, these interior spaces, frame in an artificial domestic space within that. So I've been very interested in this notion, and it starts, it, it started off from a book called Faking Death. It started off from a number of things, but it was really um, pushed forward. Uh, through uh, the reading of uh, Penny Newstone's Faking Death, which is a book which uh, puts about almost the impossible um, strategy or intention of defining what makes or positioning something about Canadian photography and suggesting uh, what makes Canadian photography what it is or some similarities that are shared there. And within that uh, text, there was a, a particular notion uh, which referred to an here, a, a here and elsewhere perspective that Canadian photographers were always sort of at one place looking in or through to another. Uh, and that really was kind of the catalyst and one of the major motivators in taking that concept quite literally with the Dream Homes project, which, is, which was the flats. And after having worked on that for a number of years, um, as would be the case with working any, with anything for a number of years, I became uh, less interested in some of the, the uh, formal elements that were playing out in terms of just you know repeating this notion, uh, but kind of interested in other ways of exploring these ideas. And so uh, it brought me to this work, which was this is actually the first piece uh, in the Tripmaster series, which is a series that explores, uh, you know, in a very formal sense, the same kinds of ideas. The separation between domestic or sort of idealized space in our relationship with natural elements. But then, of course, uh, this also um, engages itself with some, some obviously quite different architectural and recreational uh, elements that were absent and, and not even really considered in that other work. Um, and so that's really what this exploration is, is this idea of recreation. And when it started out, um, I, to be quite honest, the idea of nostalgia wasn't something that was at the forefront in my, in my ideology. But as it started to build itself up, um, I started to recognize how much of this sort of, this notion, this desire to um, 
that's embedded within recreation to participate in these impossible ways that nostalgia is, is inevitably and inexplicably, inexplicably embedded in that notion and that very idea. Um, so the idea of, of putting this into the, the, the concepts of, and the ideas that are around nostalgia were just sort of built in and as, as I played it out and worked through the project, it became more obvious to me. Um, which also is what leads into uh, the exploration of this works, which is, which is from a sub-series that is directly linked to this, um, which is the Swimmers Project, which kind of deals with the, uh, the absence of the figure here rather than the implication, which was something that the, the class, the theatrical sets, um, really dealt with in a more direct way. But I wanted to um, utilize in both of these series a more uh, pure, uh, return to a more of a pure kind of straight photography strategy. And so from that, um, these works come about where they are documentary in the sense that they are actually what's happening with them. Uh, paired with different conceptual and theoretical uh, aspects, hoping to um, issue themselves out. So while the figures imply with the architecture, um, and obviously within these figurative uh, pieces with the swimmers, it's also dislocated within that um, state and the relationship with nature. And so it's very important for me in the swimmers that the, 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 the photographic moment, that freezing of time, holds the figure in this place, in this stasis that is neither um, there, uh, neither part of the, the natural environment, nor is it independent of the natural environment. And I like that, that stasis, that sort of teetering edge, where in reality, that's where the trailer homes exist. That even if we do uh, manage to use these homes, which these homes are all dormant, they're not being used, and in many cases, as the series uh, has expanded, I'm photographing these trailer homes in suburban neighborhoods, with on lots where there are houses with beautiful curbside appeal, you know, everything is perfect, just the way anyone would want it to be, but then there's this giant trailer home stuck there, or in some cases boats, which I'm not interested in. And I, but I was interested in this idea that we sort of work towards the capacity to have the means to recreate, yet we don't recreate when we do, we just <laughs> separate ourselves from the environment that we're, um, you know, that we're pining for, and I think that's the better nostalgic element within this work. So as I pre-warned you, I could talk forever. <laughs> so maybe I'll stop, I'll leave that as the as the lead-in.